In today's video, we're going to be looking at the iconic Jewel truck in BeamNG Drive, and we're going to be reliving a little bit of the Jewel movie, the Steven Spielberg masterpiece from back in 1971, and just going through a bit of narration, and I'll be making sure that I push and destroy at least one red car over the course of this video, if you know what I mean. So I uh, hope you stay with me as we uh, go on a bit of an adventure today, something a little bit different. Stick with me, and uh, we'll go for a nice little drive today. And I'll be making sure as much as possible that chaos will reign supreme. And of course we'll finish off the video with the iconic cliff diving scene from the movie as well. Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. This is Jewel. Well actually it's not Jewel. This is the Jewel truck. For those of you who may be in the know or know your movies, uh, you'll know that this is the Peterbilt which starred in the movie Jewel, the iconic Steven Spielberg uh, movie from, uh, yeah, eons ago. Now version 3 of this truck was just released in BeamNG Drive actually as it happens. So this is BeamNG Drive and I do, I have covered this game on my channel here and there. I do enjoy playing a little bit of BeamNG Drive and for those of you who are not initiated with the game, it's basically an ultra realistic vehicle sandbox where you can drive all manner of trucks and cars. Uh, and even planes and things like that and cause all manner of destruction that's ultra realistic everything you see has damage uh, can take damage uh, particularly the vehicles you drive and this is a mod that has recently been released for the game for BeamNG Drive and this is what we're looking at right here today now I must say as well this uh, truck is fairly indestructible as you've seen so far in the previews and we're based here at one of the USA maps you'll know what map it is if you play the game um, it's fairly iconic it's based here in the desert basically and there's a lot of vistas and a lot of hills and lots of cliffs and all that kind of stuff perfect for staging uh the um wanton destruction that this vehicle is about to cause today so yeah this is a, a fairly cool little mod this is version 3 of the uh peterbilt jewel truck and you'll note that it's not perfect you can see there there's some shading issues on the uh, trailer there but overall i must say it's it's really uh, a very exciting and fun kind of truck to drive um, and you'll see that in the video coming up as well and before we get into that i just thought i'd give a quick rundown of what this movie was all about back in 1971 it uh, starred dennis weaver and basically was shot by steven spielberg quite uh, iconic i guess movie that kicked off his career and it was before the jaws um, I guess series of movies uh, and basically told a story about this uh, traveling salesman who was on the way to meet a client in the movie he gets stalked and terrorized by this uh, rather psychotic truck driver who's driving this truck which just happens to be very powerful and fast and yeah I definitely recommend checking it out if you're into your action thrillers now in the uh, honor of kind of um, Steven Spielberg's dual truck movie I'm, I'm gonna make this a, a, a cinematic video um, and you can see here that there's a few little inconsistencies I think the frame is slightly too long on this thing the chassis frame but anyway mostly it's very true to life and once I fired this thing up as well, you will hear just what it sounds like. And especially when I get on the horn as well, that sends chills down your spine, man. So <laughs> I hope you're ready for this. I'm going to hop inside in just a moment and we'll start this thing up. I'll explain just how the controls work and things like that. And then we'll take this thing down the highway. We've got some traffic turned on today, as you can see. And boy, are they in for a ride today. They have no idea. So... Uh, let's get this thing all set up. You can see here I've got the fifth wheel coupled up to the trailer and what you can do in the game as well um, You can walk around which is what I'm doing here and I've just opened the door here But I'm not sure actually whether I can close this door once I'm inside uh, Because this is a mod truck and it's not uh, I guess perfect as you could uh, imagine um, at the moment uh, Yep, yeah, so I'm gonna have to just hop outside here. Pardon me. Just a bit of technical difficulty here and defying all logic i'll just get in like this <laughs> okay so just real quick um inside here you can see that they've fairly faithfully reproduced i guess uh the jewel truck in all of its glory i think one of these still exists out there uh in the real world as well i think one or two of them exist from the movie at least one and uh you can find them uh you can find them for real actually on the um on youtube if you look it up 
But anyway, um, yeah, unfortunately the gauge lights don't work on this thing uh, being a, a mod and it's kind of work in progress at the moment. Um, so you can't really see the, the speedometer and the taco uh, RPM counter and all that too easily um, unless you kind of squint and really look. But yeah, from the outside obviously you can see the headlights and all that work just fine. Anyway, who am I kidding? We're not here to talk about the gauge lights. We're here to cause some chaos. Yeah, we'll get this thing started up. I am using my G27 steering wheel, which has the clutch pedals and all that kind of stuff and the heat shifter so I'm using the heat shifter here just to switch between gears um, so there's five speeds in the main transmission and then you've got this splitter as well so high low range uh, so you can flick to high range and get effectively another five gears basically so really you've got 10 gears in total and high range will give you a nice uh, set of highway cruising gears for more the level ground so I may well keep it in low range for the most part today Tell you what though, we'll go for a bit of a drive and I'll keep things peaceful, but I will punctuate it with the uh, moments of chaos, I guess. And just listen to the engine sound on this thing. And I think you'll agree, once I rev this thing up, in just a second... Oh yes, listen to that. Link below in the description if you want to check out this mod if you've got Beam and G. And then, <laughs> yep, yep, it's bringing back memories, folks rather terrifying memories of that movie <laughs> yeah hope you enjoyed this video today it is uh, something a little bit different than what i normally do anyway but let's go for a little drive and uh go for a drive around the canyons and we'll try and keep things peaceful and uh yeah i think we'll get into a little bit of trouble here and there as well just to keep things interesting why not now i just thought whilst i'm driving i'll just uh, read from the wikipedia page a little bit just about this movie uh i thought it'd be a nice little uh a bit of trivia as we go through and uh, just relive some of the carnage from this movie Jewel. So basically it's a uh, 1971 American action thriller. Television film directed by Steven Spielberg in his feature directorial debut. It centers on a traveling salesman, Dennis Weaver, driving his car through rural California to meet a client. However, he finds himself chased and terrorized by the mostly unseen driver of a semi-truck. Uh, that's the truck that we're driving now. Uh, the screenplay by uh, Richard Matheson adapts his own short story of the same name, published in the April 1971 issue of Playboy, and based on an encounter on November the 22nd, 1963, when a trucker dangerously cut him off on a California freeway. Now. Jewel was produced by Universal Television and uh, originally aired as part of uh, ABC Movie of the Week series on November 13, 1971. Uh, it later received uh, international theatrical release by Universal Pictures in an extended version uh, featuring scenes shot after the film's original TV broadcast. The film received generally positive reviews from critics, with Spielberg's direction being singled out for praise. It has since been recognized as an influential cult classic and one of the greatest films ever made for television. So there you go. Uh, so that's the introduction. So let's next read from the plot. In the early 1970s, uh, David Mann, a middle-aged salesman, driving on a business trip in a Plymouth Valiant sedan, encounters a dilapidated old tanker truck driving slowly in the Mojave Desert. Mann passes the truck, but it speeds up, roars past him, and then resumes driving slowly. When man overtakes and passes it again, the truck blasts its horn. Man pulls into a gas station and the truck parks next to him, with man only able to see the boots of the driver walking on the other side. So just a quick interjection here, it was actually strongly suggested in the script itself that the driver of the truck remained mostly unseen except for his boots and uh, yeah, really not much else I guess throughout the movie. Uh, I guess they wanted the truck to take on an almost uh, surreal kind of uh, psychotic uh, presence, I guess, in the actual movie. I was about to say game. Um, and so that's why the focus was heavily on the actual truck hunting down the driver. Um, and not so much the actual driver of the truck uh, being the one causing the issues. Anyway, uh, continuing on in the Wikipedia article. So man phones his wife from the uh, gas station and his wife is upset with him after an argument the previous night. The station attendant tells man he needs a new radiator hose but man scoffs believing that the attendant is trying to sell him an unnecessary replacement path, uh, part 
So um, you can see there that, uh, yeah, he probably thought, oh, this station attendant's uh, just trying to sell me a radiator hose, which I really don't need. And uh, at that time as well in the movie, I thought that red sedan was actually quite new and had fairly low kilometers on the clock. So I thought surely it wouldn't need a new radiator hose as well. But anyway, that uh, lack of getting that new radiator hose would prove quite pivotal a little bit later on in the movie, as uh, we'll find out shortly. So anyway, back on the road, the track, the truck catches up and passes man, then blocks his path each time he attempts to pass it. After taunting man this way for a while, the driver waves him past, the truck driver that is, causing man to nearly collide head on with an oncoming car, so the truck driver was trying to set him up just there for a head on collision basically. Uh, man finally passes the truck and uh, using an unpaved turnout uh, next to the highway then glances at his rear view and waves and I remember this part of the movie as well it was quite early on man kind of celebrates uh, that he managed to finally overtake the truck as well so um, yeah that was quite a, a celebratory scene for David Van there the driver of the uh, sedan I'm just gonna get back on the road here and we'll continue so after having uh, successfully overtaken the truck uh, the truck briefly slows but then begins to catch up and uh, begins tailgating uh, man's car at an increasingly high speed. The underpowered sedan, the Plymouth, is barely able to stay ahead of the truck. Uh, and I remember this scene as well where the truck just constantly bangs into the back of man's sedan and uh, yeah, causes man to swerve his sedan off the road, lose control and slam sideways quite uh, unceremoniously into a wooden fence across from a rural diner and then the truck continues down the road. Uh, man enters the, com uh, the restaurant to compose himself, but upon uh, returning from uh, the restroom, he sees the truck parked outside. He studies the patrons in the restaurant, identifies the one who he thinks is the driver, uh, just based on the boots that the, uh, whoop, just managed to stall it. Uh, we're on a bit of a hill here. So yes, looks for the, uh, the driver in the restaurant, just based on the boots that they're wearing, confronts who he believes is the driver and uh, yeah basically confronts him and then the confused and offended patron attacks man and leaves in a different truck so it wasn't the driver after all. The tanker truck driver um, leaves moments later indicating that the driver never entered the diner so again we're seeing that the driver is unseen of this truck okay and that kind of works quite well in BMG as well because you can't really see the driver there's no driver model in any of the vehicles in this game which is quite funny so yes after resuming his drive man is flagged down by the driver of a school bus whose engine has overheated this was quite a funny scene actually in the process of pushing the bus with his car uh, the front bumper the front bumper gets caught underneath the bus's rear bumper so yes the sedan was trying to push start the bus which was quite uh, ridiculous really uh, when you think about the logic behind that um, or lack thereof uh, the truck appears in a tunnel down the road, causing man to panic. So man's basically uh, failed to push the bus properly and then suddenly this truck has turned up to do the job. He and the bus driver free his car and then man flees as the truck arrives and helps push the school bus full of children back onto the road. So you can see the truck driver actually doing a good deed here as he pushes the school bus and helps start it once again. Um, and it's funny as... Uh, Man was panicking and trying to flee the scene. He was jumping on the hood of his red sedan. Um, almost didn't really care about it anymore. He was just trying to get free of the bus. Um, so that was that was quite a uh, a panicky scene. That one. So man ends up at a railroad crossing and waits for a Southern Pacific train freight train to pass through. Uh, diesel electric train. That one was. The truck appears from behind and pushes man's car towards the oncoming train. That was uh, another quite a um, nerve-wracking scene, I must say. Just like what happened right there, actually, with that poor old little minivan. Whoop! Oh boy. Okay, I think we've done it now. Well, as you can see, it's not destroyed just yet. Um, well, actually, it's, it's very much still intact. So I'll just write this thing back on its wheels and uh, we'll keep on creating some havoc, shall we? So where were we at? Man was stuck at a railroad crossing waiting for the freight train to pass and the truck was basically trying to push him just as we're pushing this other minivan right now um, and trying to push him into the passing train. Now in this scene man was basically standing on the brakes and you could see the truck very very slowly pushing the vehicle still even with even with the 
with the brakes on full in the sedan. Anyway, the train manages to finally pass and then uh, as soon as that happens, uh, man floors the accelerator and uh, he manages to cross the train tracks uh, without incident. Uh, but then he runs off the road and uh, the truck passes, continues down the road. And then man uh, reverses out of the ditch where he ended up, uh, just like we've ended up right now, and uh, slowly follows uh, the truck. And I really do just keep managing to roll this thing over so far, don't I? <laughs> Back on the road! So from here, uh, man slows right down, just trying to create some distance between uh, the truck and himself. Um, so he's basically behind the truck at this point and yeah at this point other motorists start passing him but then once again he encounters the truck and the truck's actually pulled off the side of the road it's actually waiting for him at this point in time so that's quite uh, terrifying and the truck pulls out in front of him and starts antagonizing him again trying to wave him to pass but man obviously doesn't want to he stops at a gas station with a roadside animal attraction there's a whole bunch of snakes basically in this scene calls the police from a telephone booth quite frantically but then during the call we can see the truck is driving up to the telephone booth as well and then man basically ex escapes at the last second and the truck just runs through the telephone booth basically destroying the telephone booth and that was quite a scene that one as well he's basically chased around the animal attraction by the truck and he's seen just throwing snakes and spiders and everything everywhere the poor old lady who owns the establishment has come out and she's waving her arms around because obviously she's uh she's quite upset that all of her animal attractions are being uh hurt and injured and killed so yeah it was a very um a scene of pandemonium basically during all of this uh, craziness man is able to get back into his sedan and speed away uh, around the corner he pulls off the road hiding behind an embankment as the truck drives past okay so at this point i think man has a little bit of a nap okay and he thinks okay i'm just gonna sit here for a while and i'm just i'm not going to uh basically uh try and cause any more trouble with this truck I'm just gonna let the truck do what it wants i'm just gonna sleep here for a while and then yeah so basically the scene just cuts off then it rejoins and then man heads off again he starts the car up heads down the road but then the truck is still waiting for him okay so at that point uh, man just attempts to speed past but the truck moves across the road blocking him so now at this point in the movie i guess things are kind of coming to a bit of a head okay you can uh man the driver of the sedan is getting a little bit uh kind of worked up and he just wants to just leave already he just wants to get out of this um uh, this nightmare i guess scenario which he finds himself in okay so he speeds past the truck and then the truck begins pursuing him again so the chase is on uh okay and then he swerves towards what appears to be a police car only to realize that the vehicle belongs to a pest control company that's very sad uh, he continues up the mountain road aware that the truck will be unable to match his speed so what we're about to do here as well is we're about to go up a hill and you'll see here that i'm just tailing the sedan but uh, as we go up this hill um, i'm having to shift down i'm in fourth i'm going back up to third uh, going back down to third but you can see here my speed is really affected up this hill so that's what's happening in the movie about this point as well so um, at this point the truck really slows down can't match his speed but then then of course Steven Spielberg has set this up so that the vehicle's radiator hose the sedan's radiator hose breaks on the hill of course uh, because he failed to replace it beforehand as well man did David man so um yeah, the uh, strained engine begins to overheat in the sedan and begins to fail. He starts to lose speed and he just manages to uh, get over the summit there. And then he uh, he clicks it up into neutral. He's got this old column shifter and that's quite a, uh, quite a memorable scene, that one, as he just shifts into N. But then the truck is obviously still following him because it's gone over the hill as well. And the uh, man just comes down the hill and he spins out and slams into this cliff wall and uh yeah i, I remember hearing about this as well um it was quite a, a bit of a curve just like this one actually and then the sedan just goes forward and smashes into the side of this hill and pretty much ruins one side of the suspension and um, and that was all shot in one take and uh it's amazing the lack of cgi they had back in those days and really they only just used i think one or two sedans and only one or two trucks or three trucks in total to achieve all of these special effects really it was all realistic so no special effects no cgi anyway so man's smashed into this cliff 
his uh, right front wheel I think it is alignment's completely busted and the wheels like skewed off and it's kind of not vertical anymore but he's uh, frantically trying to start the car uh, in a cloud of dust as the truck is barreling down the hill towards him he just manages to restart the car in the very last second and barely escapes being crushed by the truck which is uh, unlike what just happened to that uh, little minivan just there actually and that other sedan so man drives up the dirt road and to the edge of a canyon and this is where the climax of the movie actually is so he's going up this canyon and the truck is in hot pursuit still he turns his car to face the oncoming truck so he's basically facing his fear in this moment he jams the accelerator down with his briefcase remember he's a businessman traveling businessman or salesman uh, and then he steals these little sedan his damaged sedan which by this point is spewing like radiator smoke and coolant and the front suspension's all messed up he steers it towards the oncoming truck the truck's just barreling towards him at this at this moment as well and the truck driver probably believes yes i finally got this uh horrible old little sedan and i'm gonna get it finally and push him over the cliff and all that sort of stuff but yeah at the very last second uh, he jumps free so man jumps free of his sedan and then the truck basically kisses the car hits the car and it bursts into flames and then gets pushed backwards and then we see a view of this burning sedan uh, just being pushed backwards by this truck the truck driver approaches a cliff with the car in front with the sedan in front and he's basically realized that he's about to go over the cliff with the truck uh, and the sedan at the same time and he blasts the uh, horn one last time and then the truck basically starts its, uh, its downward crash into the canyon uh, with the sedan basically right underneath as well. And that is basically this iconic slow motion scene as we're seeing here as well as the truck just goes down to its doom basically and is destroyed at the bottom of the uh, cliff, at the bottom of the canyon I should say. So at this point, um, exhausted from his ordeal, man then sits down at the cliff's edge we get some close-ups of the destroyed truck and we can see that there's some uh, the wheels are still kind of turning and there's some blood that's dripping down onto the steering wheel or in the interior the fan inside the cab of the truck is still running I think with the sun sets and that's the end of the movie so in the game we are afforded a nice little first person view as well you can actually leave your vehicle and walk around in beam and G drive and we've been able to do this for some time in this game now it's a really cool little feature and we can just go for a little walk around and have a look at this wreckage um, which we weren't really able to do uh, in the movie uh, we did see a little bit of the wreckage but yeah we're able to kind of see things in very close-up view here and one thing that this game really excels at is as you saw as well just the physics of this you saw like the wheels come off the fuel tank explode and just go flying away and the wheels just end up you know just bouncing around and all that kind of stuff so that is all courtesy as we know because of beam and g drives awesome physics model and not only that as well within the game if you uh if you damage the radiator or if you damage the engine uh, if you you know if you damage the oil sump you will actually leak oil you'll leak coolant you can overheat the engine all that sort of stuff you can damage piston rings and valve train by over revving it's all modeled within this sandbox simulator and that's what makes BeamNG so fun to drive as well, uh, all the different vehicles that are in the game. So yes, uh, that's what really makes this a fun, joyous kind of experience. So yes, anyway, I really enjoyed making this video. It took me a little bit to put it together as well. So I really appreciate if you have watched this far. So yes, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe uh, if you enjoyed this type of content. If you want to see more or if you want to see other stuff as well, feel free to leave a comment below. And yes, I shall catch you all in the next one.